Truth Time Radio, truthful and unapologetic. Jerry writes, uh, a co-worker shared with me one of your podcasts. After hearing it, I went to Apple and pulled up the entire list and listened to 24 episodes. What a blessing. I will forever be grateful to my fellow co-worker. And, and Jerry sent another email here wanting to know if I was familiar with Kat Kerr and Andrew Womack. He said, these are just a couple of false ministries I followed before finding you. I'm very familiar, unfortunately. Both Kat and Andrew have been scamvangelicals for quite some time now. Andrew is, well, he's, he's a little bit more versed, well-versed than Kat. He's more scriptural. Don't get me wrong, he has no clue how to rightly divide the word of truth, but, but he's scriptural. Cat, now that's a whole nother, <laughs> that's different. She rarely deals with scripture. She leans more to mysticism. Today I'll cover Cat and uh, maybe get to Andrew next time. Cat Kerr, the, the cat lady. Whew. Where to begin? As I remember, she claims to be a prophetess, God's mouthpiece. She's made more false prophecies than I can count. One of her latest deals with the last election. Heading into it, she repeatedly made some of the most bizarre claims. She said God votes Republican. He supposedly told her that the United States map will turn red. She told her listeners and viewers to expect a red tsunami. All lies from a self-proclaimed prophetess of God. Not one of her election claims turned out to be true. Here, here, here's a picture of Cat for our YouTube audience. Cat here on the right. And beside her is a depiction of a lady that's supposed to be an angel. And this is wrong on so many levels. There are no female angels in Scripture. This lady in the picture has wings. Even though no angel in the Bible does. And she's draped in an American flag. And that ain't in the Bible either. But I digress. Moving along. Okay, let me, um, let me pull this up. Cat making false predictions about Donald Trump and Mike Pence. Having known him for almost 70 years, when I received Christ at age four, I'm a seer, so I saw him step inside of me. Now that's a lot there. She says she received Christ at age four. She's a seer, and her claim is she saw him step inside her. And my relationship only grew with him over all these years. And he's shown me uh, many times things that would happen, and they came to pass. Now, I can tell you some people can't be chosen by God because they can't believe for anything past a week or two weeks which makes me laugh in a way because there's some things I waited 40 years for him to do, but guess what? He did them. And he assured me back in 2015 that Trump would sit in the White House for eight years. Okay. God assured her that Trump would sit in the White House for eight years. And I actually got to pray for them during the inaugural prayer breakfast back in 2016, and he made me prophesy that. This is bizarre. God made her tell a lie. She says back in 2016, it was God that made her prophesy that Trump would be in office for eight years. And God has assured me today when he walked into my room and woke me up at noon, almost noon, 11.55 a.m., but I always had my alarm set for noon, and it didn't go off. God did. Okay, cat. We're, we're just trying to keep up here. Let me make sure I got this right. God walked into your bedroom. You were asleep. Walked in at noon. Uh, excuse me, 11.55 to be precise. God walked in the room and woke you up. The alarm clock didn't go off. God did. And he came in and he yelled as loud as he possibly could, justice will prevail. I will not listen to the stuff, the, the acts, because they don't know how to put a show on. Hell never has put on a good show. This is still God speaking. Hell has never put on a good show. 
They've always lost the seats they went after. They lost whatever they were planning to do. He said, I kicked them out of heaven. That was the first show. Lightning was striking. They were kicked out, unseated, and stripped away from power. The second show was in hell on the third day, mentioned in Colossians, when my son stood up and released the fire of God from himself and melted the faces of the hierarchy of hell and made a show of it openly. And he said, the third show is still in rehearsal right now. He said, the enemy is fighting so hard, he still has not won. I don't count it as a win. He said, I will win, and Trump will still sit in the White House for four more years. If people cannot see beyond their own nose and understand that if they believe I'm doing something, they should keep on trusting. He said, but I'm about to put a show on nobody expected. And he said, when the ground begins to shake, And the landslide begins to start. No one or nothing can stop the fraud, the contracts being shown, the videos that are being made between the parties that made contracts with evil to do evil in this land. This is my country. I will not allow it to be taken from me. This is only the beginning of the great days, the great divine decade, and the second one behind it. I'm setting up. And setting in place during this very time, when you should remember, I will always set a table in the presence of your enemies. Have you asked for that table? Because I'm about to fill it. I will expose and wipe clean the platform that they're trying to stand on right now. And Trump will have to be inaugurated. They will have to say it. Even though they don't want to, the time will come when they will have to say, Trump is the 46th president of the United States. And he will sit in that office for four more years. I have never changed that plan. I have never given an exact date to anyone when something would happen. Because I have my own time. Whether it agrees with yours or not. Whether you like it or not. This is my country. These are my plans. And I will not have these days taken from me. Can you not stand and not turn to the left? And give yourself as a partner to the evil that wants to take this land. Well, I say no. It will not happen. It will end and it will be done because I say it will be done. Watch my hand move. Now that man is done with their process, I will put my show on. And no one will ever forget when that happens. There will be great celebrations in the streets of this country and around the world. That great victory has come on behalf of the body of Christ, on behalf of my America, that I'm not giving up to any enemy. So be ready to see what will happen. Regardless of what they show, the lying, frying news and the liars and the stealers and the takers will pay greatly for what they have tried to do, for they will fail and fail greatly in every way because that landslide will pull every one of them down and justice will be served, says your God. So stand in the light or run to the darkness, but nothing will stop me from my plan of putting my son, Donald Trump, back in that White House. Even if they inaugurate the villain and try to put him there, I will kick him out, I will remove him, and I will remove every obstacle that's in the way. Maybe they'll show that in the news, says your God. So I want to ask the question that keeps being asked to me. They say, well, Kat, if you prophesied eight years, is it that it's four now and four later? No, no, it is not. It's four continual years, and get ready for some more impossible things to be said. God did choose Pence for eight years after Trump's eight years. And he has not changed his mind about that either. All right. We interrupt this devil to bring you a shot of truth. That is a lot to unpack. And God's long-winded. He must be a Baptist. He's not involved in our elections. I know that's hurtful to some. It goes against the it goes against the norm of religious thinking. If you have a broken brain, you, you most likely can accept this. False predictions stacked on more false predictions. Where does the insanity end with this lady? America is not 
God's country. Read your Bible. God's nation was the nation Israel. His chosen nation, his chosen people. America is not God's country, no matter what the cat lady says. She even said that God told her that Mike Pence would stay in for eight continuous years. Nonsensical. False prophecy. Didn't happen. Watching this gave me a brain cramp. It, it, it was so bad I had to rub hand sanitizer in my eyes while watching it. But as ludicrous, as, as ludicrous as this sounds, there are many who believe this sort of thing and claim to be members of the body of Christ. Oh, yay. This video has 766,000 views, 27,000 thumbs up, and only 2,000 thumbs down. All this from a, a self-proclaimed, pink-haired, 74-year-old prophet from Jacksonville, Florida. And in the past, she's also said, in heaven, cows drive tractors. She said that heaven has a city made of jello. 27,000 thumbs up. Take a second to digest that. So many today that are that are looking to these scamvangelicals for guidance. That's the number one reason we're seeing such a rise in those who call themselves a prophet. They're not dumb. They're opportunist. <laughs> they see the demand for someone to step up and claim to have a special word from the Lord, a word of knowledge, as they say. They've got many, many fanciful stories they can tell you. And as Cat just did, they claim they're from God. And even though they're lies and proven to be lies, it doesn't seem to hurt their business. People love this. The scam evangelicals need to be held accountable for their lies. They'll make a prophecy. It fails. They'll make another one. It fails. But they're able to continue right along. All because of the naive and, and all of the gullible Christians we have who just continue to support them. Well, many who are most likely Christian in name only. But you see, meanwhile, the body of Christ continues to look like fools. Now, Kat, she also claims to... Now, don't miss this. Okay, over the years, I've, I've heard her say this more than once. She claims to frequently travel back and forth to heaven. She claims to go back and forth to meet with God. And one time, I, I remember one time she said... God let her touch his hair. This is what people love. The hunger for truth-telling, it's rare. But Kat, she's, she's right up there with uh, the likes of Bill Johnson. Up there with, um, his name escapes me at the moment, Mike Bickle. Mike Bickle, that's it. For those not familiar with Mike, at one of my first radio gigs back in the 80s, good old Bickle boy and some other scamvangelicals, uh, Paul Kane, Bob Jones, just a couple of names that come to mind. Uh, they were part of a they were part of a group known back then as the Kansas City Prophets. They handed out false prophecies like Halloween candy, sort of like what we're seeing today. All the babes in Christ, and many that were never even in Christ, but they would come back for seconds and even thirds. Give me more. I know what you said never came to pass, but <laughs> give me more. Let's try her again. I'm naive. I'm gullible. Those false prophets, they use God's name to give out scores of, of time-specific predictions that never came to pass. But it made little to no difference. Same today. The sheep still line up by the thousands to follow these tares and goats right into the slaughter. To join their signs and wonders cult. Doctrine, smoctrine, just turn up the music, lift your hands, and praise the light bulbs. They could care less if what they're hearing is true or not. Just keep feeding me ear candy. Tickle my ears with some fanciful tales that make me feel better. Bill Johnson is the, the Bethel heretic out there in Redding, California. Yeah, the one who uh, he prophesied over that convicted pedophile, Todd Bentley, some time back. A false prophecy, of course. Just chalk it up with all the other failed predictions. Bill's the one who, who, who claimed to have seen what he called glory clouds. Also said he's seen gold dust fall from the church ceiling. 
claimed to have seen angel feathers magically appear at his home. A classic scam evangelical. Stop being a willing hostage to these guys. Think for yourself. Over and over, they make prophecies that have no merit, completely baseless. But some just never learn. Had a listener that found us a few months back, who's now waking up to the word of truth rightly divided, thank the Lord, but he said that back before the election, he had told some unbelieving family members about a prophet he found on YouTube. This is before he found us and started getting into the word, but he had found this YouTube prophet that said God told him Trump would be reelected. So this listener, he thought, hey, this prophet, he's on the up and up. He's got some truth. And he thought that by sharing this prophecy that Trump would be reelected, sharing it with his unbelieving family, he thought that, well, after it comes true, that just might make believers out of them. Well, it did not come true. So there he was with egg on his face. And he told me that he thinks now the window of opportunity has been permanently closed. His family told him that he had better never bring up God to them ever again. He's since started sending them some of our podcast, but you see how that mishandling God's word and not rightly dividing the word of truth can be damaging and actually can ruin your witness. I saw a recent poll that showed that because of the uncertain political climate, not only prophets, but mediums and psychics are on the rise. People are seeking guidance like never before. A huge demand for someone that can tell you in clear terms, what's next? What's going to happen? But you see, they can't. Only God can do that. And he already has in his word. You want a definitive answer? It's in the book, his book. You want stability in the book? Faith healers don't work in hospitals, psychics don't win the lottery, and prophets don't exist. God has nothing to do with this so-called Christian nationalism we're hearing about. He's not interested. He's not nation-building. He's body-building, one soul at a time. Today is not the day to seek a prophet. Today is not the day to to ask the Long Island medium. Today is not the day to save America. Today is the day of salvation. Today is also not the day to get your sins forgiven, as so many try to convince us. No, and and that's why Paul said in uh, 1 1 Timothy chapter 2, he said, God's will for today... Now, this is plain, simple English, easy to understand. God's will for today is that all be saved. He said nothing about all being forgiven. We're on this side of the cross. And we get our orders from Paul's office, a new administration. God no longer wills something that has already taken place. By the time 1 Timothy was written... It wasn't God's will that all be forgiven, because at that time they already were. Why do you think Paul never wrote one verse about how to get your sins forgiven? Because we can't get something we already have. Thirteen letters, yet not one mention of how to get your sins forgiven. Incredible. There's nothing to do in your flesh or believe in your mind that will merit forgiveness. God can't forgive non-imputed sins. Think about that. God can't forgive non-imputed sins. They're not imputed. They're not there. They're not there for him to forgive. Christ shed his sinless, untainted blood and willingly gave his life for you. He arose the third day. His payment for the world's sins was made. God accepted the payment. He's satisfied concerning the world's sins. Now, today... The issue is salvation. If you're not saved, you can change that today. It's time you stop struggling and and, and rest your faith in that he died for your every sin and there's nothing left for you to do but believe it. Rest in that. Okay. You only get two educations. The one you're given and the one you give yourself. 